and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Hello, Mom. I want you to meet my wife, Janet, and our little Megan. I find this very awkward, Samuel, but I will let you in. Hi, Grandma. It's been a long time, Mom. I'm sorry we had such a terrible fight. You offended me deeply, Samuel. I've been praying you'd come to your senses and return to Mother Church. Grandma, can I play with your dolly? Holy Mother of God. No, give her to me. This is no dolly. Shame on you. Sorry, Grandma. This is what happens when you marry a non-Catholic woman. It's no wonder little Megan doesn't understand. Come here, Megan. Don't be afraid of Grandma. Let me tell you who this really is. She's pretty. She is, Megan, and I love her so. Now if you'll excuse us, I should like to spend time with my granddaughter, if you don't mind. Of course not, Mother. Thank you. Come, Megan. Janet, let's be quiet and let Mom have her say, before we speak. All right, Sam. My mother gave me this little book. I used to read it to your daddy every night at bedtime. May I read to you, a little bit from it? Oh, yes, Grandma. Thank you. It's a classic of Mother Church called, The Glories of Mary. By Saint, Alphonsus, Ligori. If Jesus is the king of the whole world, Mary is also queen of the whole world. She's a queen? Mary is queen, also of hell. The devils in hell, tremble at Mary and her great name. Mary, in thy name, let every knee bow in heaven, on earth and under the earth. All obey the commands of Mary, even God himself. Does your daddy ever pray to Mary? No, Grandma. How sad. It says that those who do not serve Mary will not be saved. That scares me. Mary is the ladder to heaven. She said, I am the mother of mercy the joy of the just, and the gate of entrance for sinners to God. You see, the Holy Spirit was Mary's husband. Mary became the mother of her Creator. So as it says here, Mary is the mother and spouse of God. I was once a faithful Roman Catholic like you. Then why would you leave, Mother Church? Megan, go see Daddy. Okay, Mama. At 16, my priest and a visiting father raped me. When I told my mom, she slapped me and called me a liar. When it kept happening, I ran away and left the church. Just like your son, Sam did. My Sam? He was sodomized by a Father John as an altar boy. No. Father John would never do such a thing. He is a saint. Well, he did, many times. That's why Sam quit the church. Impossible. Sam knew you'd never believe him because, a book you gave him says, the priests are so many gods. Pope Innocent III said, The priest is placed between God and man, inferior to God, but, superior to man. In fact, that book says, the power of the priest, surpasses, that of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's a lie. Who said that? Lee Corey, in a book you gave Sam. 
Shall we read what the Holy Scriptures say about Mary? Yes, I think we should. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. The Holy Ghost placed the Son of God inside Mary. Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary knew she also needed a Savior. Her fiancé, Joseph, was shocked that Mary was pregnant. He had never been alone with her. What would he do? The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So Joseph knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Catholicism teaches that Mary was sinless and remained a virgin, but the Holy Scriptures record Mary offering two doves for a sin offering. Later, she bore Joseph four boys and some daughters. The biblical Mary cannot possibly be the Virgin Mary goddess of Catholicism. We must believe the scriptures. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? Yes. So, how did Jesus treat his mother? During his ministry, Jesus gave his family no special privileges. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Mary was treated just like everyone else. One day, a woman publicly tried to force Jesus to exalt Mary. Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. It didn't work. In the scriptures, Jesus never called Mary mother. Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. Mary was a vessel to bring forth the Son of God. Nothing more. She had no other special purpose. Mary grew old and died just like every other person. She is with her Savior in heaven, but her body is still in the grave, like everyone else. The Bible says, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Mary also had to do what every person on earth must do. Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner, and I need forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. Please come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior. Thank you, Lord. And Mary was saved. When Jesus rose from the dead, Satan suffered a mighty blow. Four hundred years later, Satan developed a plan. And he would use his favorite fallen angel, the Queen of Heaven. Satan had used this goddess worship to deceive the people for centuries. By 431 A.D., he pulled her out of hell and renamed her Mary. Satan made the world believe that his phony virgin ruled heaven as a goddess. I am who I am in the Divine Trinity. I am the daughter of the Father, the mother of the Son, and the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Then it's all a lie. Mary is not an eternal virgin. She did not get special treatment. She had kids with Joseph. She was a sinner and admitted she needed a savior. Just like me. You monster, my family is in hell because of you. You damn every Roman Catholic to hell, who trusts in you more than Jesus. I hate you. Oh, Queen Mary. No, Megan, you were right. She's just a dolly. I can't believe it, Janet. My church lied to me all my life. Mary was everything to me. 
I worship Mary too, Mom. What will God do? Samuel? Will he throw me in hell now? Not if you do what the real Mary did. I'll do it. Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner, and I need forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross for me. Please come into my heart, I receive you as my Savior. Thank you, Lord. And Grandma got saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Nobody else can save you. Admit you are a sinner. Be willing to turn from sin. Repent. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose from the dead. Through prayer, invite Jesus into your life to become your personal Savior. What to pray? Dear God, thank you for showing me what you think about Catholicism. I also reject it. I accept Christ's sacrifice as perfect and complete. Please forgive me in Jesus' name. I invite Jesus Christ to come into my life and I place my trust in him alone for my salvation. Thank you for giving me eternal life right now. If you just accepted Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, Read your King James Version Bible every day to get to know Jesus Christ better. Pray to God every day, in your own words. Be baptized, worship, fellowship, and serve with other Christians in a church where Christ is preached and the Bible is the final authority. Tell others about Jesus Christ. There is not a more demonic, or unbiblical practice than the Catholic confessional, the idea that a sinful man can forgive someone's sins, is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 couldn't be clearer. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus never gave his apostles the power to forgive people's sins. What a bunch of lies. No priest can forgive anyone's sins. He can't even forgive his own sins. Come to think of it, who does forgive the priest's sins? Does he go to confession too? If the priest goes directly to God, then why can't you? Even the corrupt religious leaders of Jesus' time knew that only God can forgive sin. Who can forgive sin but God only? The crazy idea that the Catholic Mass has some special power to it, is absurd and unbiblical. The Catholic religion is dangerous, teaching people false religion, leading one billion souls into the lake of fire. To claim that Jesus gave the apostles the power to forgive sin is blasphemy. We've already learned that there is only one mediator between God the Father and men, the man Christ Jesus. We've also read in Matthew 6 verse 15, that God requires us to forgive others who seek our forgiveness, it's not an option. In addition, not one mention is made anywhere in the New Testament of an apostle ever forgiving someone's sins. The fact alone speaks volumes against the Catholic religion. Notice what Peter said to Simon, the former sorcerer, when Simon tried to buy God's power in Acts chapter 8, Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps, the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. The apostle Peter told Simon to pray to God for forgiveness. Peter didn't claim the power to forgive Simon's sins, nor did Peter tell him to go find a confessional booth. In all the letters which the apostle Paul wrote to the New Testament churches, he never mentioned or taught anything about the power to forgive another's sins. Clearly, the Catholic Church is lying. The Word of God condemns formalized religion. It is abundantly clear that the nuns who are chanting the Rosary are praying with vain repetitions. This is just one example of a man-made tradition, not taught anywhere in the Bible. The Rosary was invented in 1090 AD, 
if you trust in man, you will be greatly disappointed at the great white throne of judgment one day. If you trust upon Jesus Christ as your personal savior, Jesus will not fail you. Forsake the great whore of Catholicism, and turn to Jesus Christ alone. Follow the word of God, not the religion of men, to make a living off of victims like you. Roman Catholics know about Christ, but do not know him personally. Therefore, they are trying to work their way to him. Roman Catholicism is essentially a religion of works and not of grace as taught in the scriptures. Though the cross and the death of Christ are emphasized, the saving truths of redemption are not taught, or they are so mixed with Mary, penance, purgatory, ritual, mass, and with idol and saint worship, that faith unto salvation is completely obscure. Catholics confess their sins to a priest when the Bible says, who can forgive sins but God only. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Catholics pray to Mary and the saints, when the Bible definitely states, for there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Catholics believe that after death is a place called purgatory. How could this tally with the fact of being saved? The Bible says, the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. Some tell us that they have met some pretty good Roman Catholics who talk all about Jesus and seemed to trust him. But then again, if they trust Jesus alone for salvation, then why mass? confession, beads, statues, crucifixes, etc, etc. Either one knows he is saved, or does not know he is saved. What Roman Catholics really are talking about, is the wafer, being their Christ. The Roman Catholics are as lost as the poor African witch doctor or Hindu. We urge you to pray for the Roman Catholics and to witness to them as never before. They are lost and need a living saviour, not one dead on the cross. Those who insist that there are saved Roman Catholics, either do not know the Bible or do not know Roman Catholicism. And see that all saved people are an holy priesthood, and, a royal priesthood. You do not need a priest, you are a priest your own priest. You go straight to God through the blood of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins. Lost friends, you have no access to God for forgiveness except through Christ. A Catholic priest cannot forgive sins, that is blasphemy. A Protestant minister cannot forgive sins, that is blasphemy. A nun cannot forgive sins, that is blasphemy. A Baptist pastor cannot forgive sins, that is blasphemy. We are obligated to share the gospel message, the way to heaven, to others in the world, and we go about that mission with the Holy Spirit living inside us, guiding us as we share his truth. We are obligated to tell people the only way to be forgiven is through faith. Jesus said in John 8:24. If you do not believe that I am, you will indeed die in your sins. This is the very core of the gospel message, and the very heart of what we are to explain to the world. It was Jesus' last command to his followers before he physically left the earth, carry forward the message of hope, and save as many as will believe in him. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it.